I'm assuming this is your first time actually using Sanity. Uh, yeah, I mean, besides just like kind of playing around after installing it, uh, yeah. but haven't really built anything substantial with right. it. That's good. I saw that uh, that website you shared, you used Dato for that? Yeah, so we used Dato CMS after, because uh, it was really hard to figure out how to do, like reorder the blocks in Contentful. Um, yeah. So the company and the rest of the team decided to go with something else. And it was also a lot cheaper as well right. compared to Contentful. Right, right. yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, if you can go into that folder. Oops. All right. And then you just do sanity starch, or actually, if you can open your terminal first there, or no, your terminal, your uh, your code editor. Oh, the code editor. Okay. I don't know if you have that terminal thing set up of like code and dot to open VS code in that folder. My street is very loud today. If you hear something, let me know. I'm going to keep muting myself. <laughs> gotcha. No worries so far. All right. Um, if you can zoom in VS Code as well a little bit, that'll be perfect. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, all right. So you can start running Sanity Starch. Um, Um, and then this is the folder structure we get. The most important bit is the schemas folder. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you look at that, you're going to notice there is a schema.js file that basically concatenates in an array all of the available schemas. So we are pulling like the user defined ones, such as category, post, and author. We're also pulling in the schema types from Sendity. Um, and then, yeah, we just include all of these and that's our schema uh, in terms of the content types that we support. So if you go into say post.js, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. that is the shape of a Sanity schema. It's basically just a JSON object. There are some mm -hmm. JavaScript that you can add for validations and that sort of stuff. But it's, um, yeah, it's just saying, what are the fields that a given document has? Um, and then the type of the fields, the name, the title for uh, for editors. So you can see like categories is an array and it's an array of references to category, the, the mm -hmm. document type mm -hmm. category. So this is the sort of, that that's the way you do relationships and, and referencing. Um, yeah. But you know, if it was a single category that a post could have, you would be saying that, you know, there is a field of named category and it's of type reference to uh, category. Does that make mm -hmm. sense so far? Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Questions that you, you, that are floating through your head right now, if any. No, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, so with this, you can be able to define like custom, custom types too, right? Yes. Yes. Which is the block content.js. You see there in line 48, yeah, we're using mm -hmm. block content that is uh, a user defined one. So if you open block content.js, um, this is, well, there is even a description, but yeah, it's for the rich text field for posts. Um, and rich text insanity, uh, which is something I, 
I think you're gonna enjoy um, as compared to some other solutions. It's it's very simple because it's just it's just an array of objects um, stored at, as JSON, and then say like a regular paragraph with which is this type block. Um, it has like what is the text, the formatting options, the annotations, the list style, or the yeah, the, the style is it uh, H1 or H2? Um, and we're going to take a look at the data for that. So perhaps mm -hmm. what you can do next, and then we come back here later, is to open that localhost 333 that you have in your terminal and edit a, a specific post. There you go. So we have three document types, post, author, and category. The fourth schema that is defined is that block content. It is not a document. It's just a part of documents. So you don't see it there. Um, yeah, and then you can go in into post and click on that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, you know, add it something, just like do a, a few tests for the, the feuds. The author is a reference, so there is none. You could create a new one. Mm. Oh, I really like this, yeah. Expanding to the side. There we go. Got and you can connection. actually you can actually populate the bio for for your author profile. Just write something and mm. a little bit of formatting. <laughs> oh, like so with formatting, like it I just, yep. No, it doesn't do mark now. It's um yeah, you can select and that's not a yeah, okay. Yes. Because <laughs> right now we're we don't have any other um uh, text type, so it's only mm -hmm. one. But um you could close this panel or you could inspect it first. So if you click on that three ellipses on the top right for your yes, uh, you're gonna see inspect. This reveals the data for this document. Oh, this is awesome. So you see, this is just plain JSON. That's how it's mm -hmm. And you see in bio, um, bio is an array with two items and they're both objects. You see the first one is of type block and it has a children with text Shopify developer. Um, and you also see there is a marks array. Yeah, right above your cursor. There is a marks. Uh, the zero is, I guess you can click on raw JSON. It's going to be a little bit easier to read, I think. There you go. Um, so yeah, Shopify developer is the text and it includes the mark strong, just saying that it's it's bold edge. Um, but mm -hmm. they, like beyond a bold, you also have like an underline and a link and a footnote. Uh, those are going to show up in the marks array. Um, and then, yeah, the other one has no marks. So you can see mm -hmm. that it is empty. Um, so these are two paragraphs. Children is say like if you had Shopify developer, but only Shopify was bolded, you'd have two children, one with the mark, one without. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you want like to read more about it, this is a, this is an open source protocol or format called portable text that Sanity uses. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, we can, we can get back to that later if you want, just one second. All right. Questions you have so far? Uh, no, this is pretty cool. I like it. All right. So Sounds good. yeah, you can close the Rocky panel, the, the author. So at the top right, there you go. So the author is there. Okay, let's take a look at references very quickly. Uh, if you can inspect the data for this one as well. There we go. Uh, you're going to see author um, is an object with type reference. Um, mm. And then right now there is some other stuff like the week and strength on publish. That's just because we haven't published this uh, yet, this document. But the, the big thing is that underscore ref, that's the ID of the document for the author, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Right? So you don't store the author in your posts. 
we're storing it in a separate document. And then later we can query it. If you want, we can jump into queries very quickly, just so you can see how that looks like. Um, and then in the query, you get the author data. Yes. If I'm like derailing you or like not going where you want, um, let me know. Uh, we are still going to get your page building. <laughs> gotcha. So you, you, you said a uh, query. So are you talking about the, the query format that Sanity uses, right? Is that in reference to that? Yes. Um, you can use GraphQL if you want. Uh, mm -hmm. that. But what is really, really interesting is Grok. This mm -hmm. language because it's flexible and it, you can actually do computations with it without having to define GraphQL resolvers. Um, mm. And it's very expressive, but you know, if you already, you mentioned Gatsby, so I imagine you already have some experience with GraphQL. And if yeah. you're using Gatsby, you're not even gonna query directly from Sandy, you're gonna query from, from Gatsby's GraphQL layer. Uh, what is the framework you're gonna use for your site? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm mostly using Next.js. That's so that's the stack. Um, most likely GraphQL. Uh, but you know, if if Grok is the way to go, um, definitely open to using that as well. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I have I have a small like interactive article or course for Grok that you can mm. go through, like in less than an hour and get comfortable with like easily 80, 85% of the language uh, mm -hmm. and get really productive. So like, if you want to query this, uh, this uh, post, we can do that just to show what graph is like. Otherwise we can jump into page building, whatever you feel is, is most important right now. Uh, we can jump into to page building. Okay. I don't All right. want to take too much of your time. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm very flexible, but all right, let's uh, jump back into VS Code then. Uh, or actually, one last thing. If you can go into body uh, and write something. There you go. So now if you, if you click on that text on that line again, and you click on normal there, that drop down. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Now these are the the styles that we defined back in that block content.js file mm, mm -hmm. uh, so that's like you know if you only want to support paragraphs which makes sense for a bio then you're not gonna you know offer h1s and that sort of stuff um and yeah you can rename these as well whatever works for you um and then you can also add an image so if you go in and click on image there um yeah you can also just drag something in there if you want. Perfect. All right. Um, now I think we can inspect this and see. I don't know why the preview isn't showing, but. Oh, actually, yeah, I think I know why. But anyways. Um, if you click on the the three dots there again, inspect the, the file. You're gonna notice in uh, body, um, we have again the block, which is of style H2. So learning sending can be fun is a heading two. Um, and then you have like an empty paragraph. I see. Right okay. below it. Yeah, there you go. Then the, the other one is an empty paragraph. All right, I am back. Um, yeah, did you see the, in the inspect, did you see the, the image field? Yeah, it's towards the bottom here, right? Yes. Image. Images, they are also references because the image itself is hosted as a separate sanity document that includes like some really interesting metadata such as what is the color palette in the image? What is the, the format, the size? Uh, mm -hmm other metadata that I don't have off the top of my head. Um, so you can, you know, use that to 
reference it across whenever you use the image, so you don't have to re-upload it twice. Um, but it's also like a strong reference. So if you do want to delete the image, it's going to warn you, hey, you have these places where you're using it, as opposed to like some like more traditional CMSs like WordPress, where you can delete the image and it's just going to break every post that uses that. But yeah, um, I guess this is a good example of the sort of data that rich text instantly is going to get you. Page building, we can. We can do page beauty in this rich text format, but we can also do it in a separate list, a, a plain array. But the format is going to be the same. You see in image, we have the underscore key, which is the identifier of that specific object in the array. So you mm -hmm. can use that to easily reorder. So you could go in and, and drag the, the image. So it's going to use that. But all, all the rest is like the type of the object, the block. And then the properties of that block. In this case, it's just an image and it has an message. Um, so yeah, I guess let's uh, let's start building something from this. Uh, so if you can go back to VS Code. Here we are. Yes. Um, I think we can create a new schema perhaps um, for pages just to do a separation. So page.js. Um, and then you're going to export by default an object. So yeah, just um, just has like name page. That's that's good. So yeah, just a string property name, uh, page. And then type document. So that, that's just telling Sanity you can actually add this as a standalone entity in the database. And then mm -hmm. the other, the most important one is feuds. There are some other metadata you can add. This is good for now. Uh, so you can add feuds. Um, and then that's an array. Right. Um, so if you open the array and create a new object there for say, yeah, just, just do an object um, with, name title and type string. So open the curly braces. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. This is a, a little bit hard to <laughs> go over uh, this. Yeah, title. Actually, uh, it would be the name. Oh, the name is title. Yes. yes. And then the type string. There you go. Uh, so yeah, let's just save this and go into schema.js. So now we created the schema. We have to go back and add it to, to Sanity. So you can just uh, import and add, yeah, right below post perhaps. So we're adding page, right? Yeah, and then you have to import it at the top of the file. File. Yes. Here. Page. Uh, page. Yes, perfect. So now if you go back into Sanity. Okay, Sanity. Here. Yes. You're going to see now there oh, is I a page. It. Yeah, there you go. Um, you can customize this menu, what is called the desk structure. As you mentioned, something really interesting about Sanity is how flexible it is. Uh, but mm -hmm. we're not going to have the time to get there, but you know, you can reach out and I can point you to where you need to go later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you create a document for a page, you're going to notice it only has that boring string, uh, feud for the title. Mm -hmm. And even that is not required. Um, so perhaps we could make it so make it required or add, a, another feud, but yeah, let's not get into validations now, but just know like um, Sandy is very flexible in how much you can provide validation. So say like you want to ensure that a page has at most 40 characters and that it mm -hmm. includes either the SEO description or the SEO title, uh, mm -hmm. that the, the URL, the slug includes the keywords that you search, you know, all sorts of things you could, you could do with JavaScript. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but you know, the, the most common one would be the required. So I guess we can do just that one. So if you're going to go back to VS Code into that page schema, and yeah, in line eight, um, you do like validation. Uh, so yeah, the validation property is it takes, it's a function that takes rule as a parameter. So you can do like capital case rule. Capital case. Rule. Uh, oh, rule. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry okay. for the pronunciation there. Um, and then that's a parameter of the function. And then you can do an arrow function like the equals uh, greater than, yeah. Um, and then you do rule dot required, which is a okay. function, and then you can call the function. Yeah. So this is just saying like, when you're validating the title string, just make sure it's required. But you can also add other stuff to this method. So like dot required dot min. So you say like the minimum size of it is uh, like ten. Yeah, that that's a good. Uh, that's yeah. So if you save this mm -hmm. and try to create a a title with less than ten characters, then it's gonna prevent you from publishing it. Oh, right here. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, this is awesome. The warning right here is pretty cool too. Yeah, and you can see like at the very bottom, you can't publish this. It's like grayed out. But yeah, if you write a little more, there you go. Now you, you can. Uh, okay, so now let's jump into the actual meaty part of it, which is page booting. So mm -hmm. in light of that idea of feuds uh, that you just added the title one, you can pretty much just copy that one. Um, and we're going to essentially change the, yeah, you can copy lines five through nine, this object for the title, and add it right, right in, add a new one right below it. Okay. Sorry, uh, inside the array, so in line nine. Oh. There you go. Um, and now this one, let's call it, I don't know, content, body, uh, whatever works for you. Yeah. And then this one is not of uh, type string. It's of type array. So, um, so like the word array? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, the array uh, type doesn't have this validation uh, like of min. It's so you could remove the min, just leave the required or delete it altogether. But it, you could actually, perhaps it does, because you, you got to have at least 10, 10 entries in the array. I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the sort of thing. You know, you would take a look at Cindy's great reference docs and use that as, as your guideline. Um, but yeah, so this is, uh, this is good. Um, then right below validation, I guess if you go back into Sanity now, it's going to yell at you that this is an invalid feud because the array type needs to have, what is it adding as a list? Yeah, it needs the of property. So mm -hmm. is it, what is it an array of? Is it made out of gotcha. strings? Is it made out of dates? Is it made out of user-defined blocks for your page builder? So yeah, let's, um, let's create a new schema. And, or perhaps the first one we can add is of image. So if you do a comment there, um, sorry. Um, yeah, let's, let's first do an, uh, an image, which is already a built-in type. So you do a comma and do the of uh, property. Image? It, it's gotta be a, an array. So, cause you can have arrays of multiple different uh, children types. And then you do an object. So open curly braces and do type image. There you go. Now, if you save this, go back there. There you go. And then like perhaps you can add a new one and, and browse that, uh, that. So if you click on select, 
oh, sorry. Um, you're gonna browse the the ones that we already have. So yeah, and even mm -hmm. on that uh, asset library, you can also overwrite that with um, custom plugins. There is one that is more like if you have a really high amount of images and you want to do tagging and, and some other more complex stuff. That's the sort of thing that uh, Synity allows you to do. Uh, so you can mm -hmm. do that but again. And, and then mm -hmm. you see that content uh, has an error. It's probably that min uh, value that we set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like expecting at least 10 images. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so this is the image. Now let's say, what is the sort of block that you use the most in your, in your page building um, approach? Uh, so I usually, so for example, let's look at um, for like a page like this, right? So things would be separated into sections. So they, like a, a block would be like hero block, right? Uh -huh. And then you kind of come down and be like, you know, animated text block. Uh -huh. And then like this block will be, uh, these two will maybe be the same with like a toggle or something. Uh -huh. Be like, you know, flip order. Uh, so that, that's what I, what I kind of mean by block. Right. Yeah. No, we are aligned there. Um, so let's let's do this one. That last one, with, which you can flip. So what what do you usually name that? Um, like two column with image or something. All right. Let's let's do that. Maybe just yeah yeah okay. Two columns or yeah. So go into schemas folder, create a new uh, new file, and like you as your project grows you can have like your own folder structure for saying like oh maybe perhaps you have the blocks folder you have the documents folder that sort of stuff for now let's just mm -hmm. do all in a single folder so yeah um, mm -hmm. maybe two columns uh, is a good name okay so uh, for two columns perhaps you can um, copy the page uh, schema, just to skip the boilerplate. So copy all of it. And then, um, yeah, in line two, perhaps that's where the name is, you would replace with two columns. In line three, instead of a document, it's an object because it's it doesn't, it's not a self-contained entity that can go into the database. Uh, you can perhaps uh, provide a user-friendly title. So, so like create a new line and do a title uh, with a new name for that. This is what shows for uh, for editors. Mm. Yeah. Um, then there is a comma there missing. Comma. Mm, and now I'm not sure what your columns has. Uh, perhaps just a single image and uh, rich text. Yeah, so like one side will have an image and the other one will have rich text. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and you mentioned the toggle. Um, one thing that is really interesting is that perhaps you want to be very specific about um, like algorithmic design. So instead of having your editors set whether or not the uh, the image comes on the left or on the right. You just mm -hmm. assume a rule that if it if it comes right after another two columns, then I don't know what happened. Uh, if it comes so so say we have like two two columns um, blocks, the second mm -hmm. one would always uh, go on the right the image, so mm -hmm. the others don't have to do that manually. This sort mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. thinking is something you're going to have to do probably together with your team, hopefully. So this way you mm -hmm. like, what is the level of control you want? But always mm -hmm. keep in mind that what they are building is primarily about the content um, as they are editing, not so much mm -hmm. about the, the visual specifics. So that's where systems that are too free flow in, in, in how much users can edit the page building. So like they can yeah. change the padding of each individual section and the title casing and all of that stuff. Um, that's probably, you know, they start getting caught in, in, in visual considerations instead of the content. But, you know, mm -hmm. that's a, 
it's going to be about your team. But in this case, let's just do the image and the content, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So what you can do perhaps is going to author. So author has that bio uh, field. I think we could just steal that. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. And we can use that as the two columns uh, content field. Yeah, I guess you can delete both of uh, these uh, fields currently there. Then we copy it from pages. So, you know, line 20 all the way up to six. Um, you can delete that and yeah. that's on in use. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, you know, just change bio to content. Let's... Right. And then say perhaps. You also want to offer beyond paragraphs. You also want to offer um, headings or lists. Uh, so you could change that. So, you know, if you want to offer users the possibility to add lists, you can just comment line 15 or remove that where it's saying that there is no list. So if you if you delete that, then send is going to use the default bullets and, and numbered lists. Um, and then for styles, perhaps you can also add like a heading too. Um, yeah. So heading, all right. Yeah. So it'll be oh. another object. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be title heading. Sorry. Title. Heading two, and then value just uh, H2. There you go. Awesome. And then perhaps you can rename per normal to paragraph uh, to make it clearer for editors. Mm. There you go. Um, and then we can add the image. So, oh, um, value you can leave as, as normal um, because that's like the default sanity one. Of course, you can set paragraph as well, but that's going to add a little bit of setup. Uh, so, mm -hmm. normal good. Um, Right, and then the last thing could be perhaps just a type image. So the content and the image. So a new field, um, a new field outside of this content array. Oh, it's a new field? Yes. So like the two columns has both the content and the images. Am I getting too caught on the, on the specifics or is it like the- No, I think this is really good. I, I think, yeah, this is like how, you know, I would want to build it. So I think learning it this way would be very helpful. Gotcha. So this would be image, right? Yes. Type image. Of image. Right now you are adding this image inside of the content array. So like mm -hmm. um, if we are talking about our two columns, you have the written content on the left or the right and the image on the other side. Um, and then you're gonna have editors change the written content. Right now they could add images to the written content and there is no image. So what you you'd have to do is actually move that line 19 to 23 out of that array that is highlighted. Then you can paste it there. There you go. Does that make sense? Like before it was inside of the of um, array for, oh, actually, it's even one level up, up, up. yeah. So out here. Yeah. If we, if we had like auto formatting, that would be <laughs> easier to reason about. But yeah, uh, so if we scroll up a little bit, um, we're saying that two columns is an object and has these fields. The first field, mm -hmm. the content array. The content array has a block for its only possible value. So Sandy is going to use that to define the rich text field. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. in line 21, the second field of the two columns object is the image that is of type image, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes right. sense. All right. And then, of course, we could work on validation. So say we want an image. We want an image that is at least uh, that is as close to square as possible. So again, we could use the image metadata, get the height and the width and say, what is the aspect ratio? Oh, I want to make sure the image is square because otherwise mm. it's gonna potentially break the design. 
or I want mm -hmm. to force users to use a focal point or a cropping that Cineni provides and make sure it's square. You know, that's sort of, um, again, algorithmic design that, you know, whatever you need to make it pop automatically as much as possible, you could enforce that in both validation descriptions. We haven't used any, but you could say a description for editor is like, please use the highest quality image because Cineni is going to have the CDN that auto scales your image. So, Gotcha. You know, can, can we try doing that? Setting a description? How would that work? Yeah, just do a description. And then you pass in a string. Or if you want something that is dynamic, you could use uh, JSX and React. But in this case, I guess just a plain like mm. images in the highest quality possible. Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. So if you save this, um, go back. Oh, actually, right now, two columns is not added to the schema. So we have to go to schema.js on the left and uh, do the same as we did for the others. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's go two columns, um, two columns. Yes. And then we need to go down here. Perfect. And then now the last thing is going back to page.js and adding two columns as a possible entry in the content array. So pretty much like you did for image, you did there in line 16 type image, you can go in and create a new object with type uh, two columns. It actually has to be in a, in a separate uh, object. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. The reason why this is an object is that you could pass some extra stuff. So like you're using two columns here, but you want to name it something else. So you can pass a separate title or you want to have mm -hmm. uh, like a specific icon. We haven't gotten much into like customizing the studio, but you know, do know you could add specific previews for each block. You could uh, change the icons of them. Uh, and, you know, some other stuff you can, passing in even like custom components. I've done in the past, like I've reused my next sites, my, my React components inside of Cindy. So like the mm -hmm. editors would see how the block would look in the site there in the studio. Oh, that's awesome. But mm -hmm. it was, honestly, I don't feel like Cindy's UI is made for that. And it was kind of convoluted or weird to like, look at. I had to scale down because, you know, it's, it's a box inside of mm -hmm. like a complex UI and mm -hmm. the, like the website two columns uh, component is supposed to like go full screen and really big and full of content and mm -hmm. it didn't work all that well, uh, but you can mm -hmm. try it out. And, and that's what I mentioned at the very start. Like, let's see what works for you, for your editors. Um, and yeah, but at least the, the, I want, I want you to show the full process of like how this works behind the or under the hood so you can implement mm -hmm. it. All right, so uh, let's go back into that, into Cindy. And you can add like a two columns block to so that page. field name. Uh, two columns two column. field name. Yeah, two All right. Two columns. It's probably at the very bottom. We, we only gave the title and the, the type, but there is no name. So you can say just in line 22, um, you can add a new line for name. An image. The image? Yeah. That's what's going to show up in your data. Um, so like I ideally, I would make it uh, lowercase uh, just to make it easier to process, but whatever works for you. Right. There we go. Perfect. So now if you click on add item in content, it's going to ask you which type. So it's either like an image or two columns, eventually like a hero or that sort of stuff. Um, so perhaps you can even like replicate what you have in the, the website. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> um, yeah, and then if you click on select or upload a new image. I can drag this. Did that work? Was it 3D and just two files? Huh. Two files. I haven't seen that before. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So now let's inspect this document. Uh, So inspect. Yep. Uh, you see content is an array. And the way you use this in your Next.js site would be very simple, actually. It's just like you create potentially like a page builder component that goes through the content array. And then given the type of each block, it's going to render a specific component. So if the block is image, render image. If the block is two columns, render the two columns component. Um, mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Right. So you're you're querying. So you're gonna loop through this content array, right? Mm -hmm. And then check this type, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, I'm pretty sure there's like a library, right, for dynamic imports, right? Um, you can use next then... default ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if you have like a and next... then like just have like a switch case. Right to see like to check you know there's just more than like three or four, yes. and then like you know if it's this specific thing then render a specific component. Yes. Right. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, as an example for dynamic uh, imports, you can go into nextjs.org and let's go to docs. Um, I'm gonna show you like the the snippet of how that would look like. If you do have a, a, a site, a next site that is running locally and like we can get it running in, in five minutes, then perhaps we can do that. But yeah, so if you search for dynamic, there's somewhere there. Where, where, dynamic imports. imports. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, you know, this is just a preamble. I guess you can scroll down a little more. Uh, there. So you, you see dynamic. The way you, mm -hmm. you have this is like, perhaps you can have an object with all of the components matched to their types. So two columns in the, the name that you gave to the schema in Sendry is dynamic import components, two columns, if that makes sense. So this mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. matching the Sendry content type to the React dynamically imported uh, component. And then you just, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, loop through that. And then in this case, you wouldn't even need a switch. Just, yeah, if there is a component, you use that. If there is no component, it's an invalid type, then do something about that. But it's not going to happen because you define your, your sending schema. So I don't know if that makes gotcha. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. OK, I can I can show some pseudocode if that, that helps illustrating. But uh, yeah. Uh, you also mentioned Tailwind. Sanity is not concerned about that, how you do styling. Even like you don't even mm -hmm. have to use web. If you do use the same data for a mobile app, uh, you know, you can do that. Uh, but mm -hmm. Tailwind mm -hmm. would work pretty well with this. Um, what else did you mention that you wanted to integrate with? Um, I think that's it. I think it's just Sanity for the content and then Next as the stack. Mm -hmm. um and then tailwind for styling uh, that should be everything perfect yeah yeah um there's some really good content on on uh tailwind and and sanity out there as well uh so if you search for that uh in the site or, or in google there's some nice mm -hmm. stuff for like for example when you get into long form text um such as like a blog post and uh, that is full of rich annotations, that thing that we showed at the very start, uh, you may find that um, you are, you have to provide very deeply nested styles. Um, and then Tailwind 
usually requires you to have classes. So, you know, there's some ways of achieving something interesting with that. I don't know. I, I, I'm overcomplicating. Never mind. Let's let's go one step <laughs> at a time. <laughs> uh, yeah, one step at a time. Yes. Yes. Are, are you referring to like like if someone like like maybe there's like a drop down, right? Like maybe they want something like with with padding, you know, with little padding and like no padding, right? And if they select something, right, um, it would trigger some tailwind class, like oh, apply the tailwind class to this component, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. And and that's. That's something simple. You saw like in, in SETI, you have you have JSON and then you can just go in. So say in two columns, uh, you can mm -hmm. say um, there is, so yeah, let's let's do that very quickly. So if you go back into VS okay. Code, do we still have like 10 more minutes? Sure, we can keep All going. Right. All right. So if you go back to two columns, yes, and add a new mm -hmm. view after image, do a comma, and then, yeah, all the, the stuff that you already saw, title, name, and type. So let's say this like style. Yeah, perfect. Amazing. Uh, the name and type is going to be a string. And then do a comma and then options. So options is an, an object. So you open the mm -hmm. process um, and do values. Yes, I, th I think that's it. And then it's very similar to the, the one we have there with styles in line 18. Um, so if you scroll up a little bit, it's very similar to that styles there. So you have like a value and a title. You can copy that and so say- we, Would it be an, an array, an array of objects yeah, yeah, like no, this? Yes, yes. So you can copy all that and just change two values. Um, so it would be an array, right? So no, no, no. Options is is an object, and then it has the values property that is an array, because there's some other stuff like some some visual stuff that you can also add to options. Um, yeah. I am. Yeah, and then like for the style, say you want to have like image on the left uh, or like large, large like, image. Yeah, yeah no, no, okay. no like Perfect. small thing. And then like large, oops, large I mean, heading like that, right? Would be, yeah, and then you change the, the value of what you want to have in your front end. So say- yeah, so like, He's like zero, right? Like the value of of the tailwind class, right? Yeah, or it could be something else, and you know, in your component, you you toggle the proper class, whatever works for you. Um, yeah, and in line thirty two, it's actually lists, not values, because you're choosing a string from a list of uh, predefined values. Yeah, or just uh, singular, so list. List. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you go cool. back. And then say like, I want all of them by default to have a small padding. So you can say like in a new line under type, initial value. So like line 30, initial value, uh, P0. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So yeah, if you go back to Cindy, every time you add a new block by default, small padding is gonna be selected but you can allow editors to customize. And then again, this is gonna be JSON in your two columns object. You can, you know, the by default, we're gonna have P6 for the value, but you know, depending on whatever user the user has, we're gonna trigger the right uh, tailwind classes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, coming back to what we were talking about, um, how much you give in terms of styling options, it was really gonna be dependent on how much you want to, allow editors to customize visually versus mm -hmm. focus on the written content. Uh, and it's yeah. a tough balance because we're not talking about like a magazine or anything like that. It's we're talking about a landing page. So a landing page weigh, weighs in much more heavily on the, the visual side. Um, mm -hmm. And then perhaps in those cases, you want to give them more, more flexibility. 
but then you know potentially also once you give them a real-time preview for them to see what they're building because you mm -hmm. saw right now this is just a form which is mm -hmm. great for you to build this very quickly it's great for them to focus on the content but it's really hard to mm -hmm. see how it's going to look like um mm -hmm. so there's previews and i can i have an article on that there are some others as well there's some really interesting plugins it's really simple mm -hmm. to integrate previews with next gotcha. um yeah so you know many many ways uh of getting this right um but i guess our time is running i just uh want to have the door open for you if you have questions in the future feel free to reach out yeah, so so I have one question. So so what we did right here, right, defining the styles. Um, so you mentioned either defining directly in the scheme itself, like like a particular class usage, right, versus just giving an arbitrary uh, like value, right. Uh, which one do you think is better? I think the arbitrary one because something that is really we mentioned uh, structured data. Um, and you know, like just annotating more semantically the web and, and our individual uh, projects. Mm -hmm. I think the least entangled with uh, presentation concerns we can get, the better. Because mm -hmm. say like, you know, right now, uh, Meet the bot is built with uh, Next. And I, I'm just using that as, a, as the example project, but and then in five years, you have like this revolutionary mm -hmm. tech and you also want to have mobile and you also want to target tvs and like mm -hmm. weird whatever like whatever comes um you want to use the same content ideally so you want mm -hmm. this content to be as resilient and clear about the content itself as possible mm -hmm. um so when you do like p6 perhaps um in a even like in a design iteration Right before shipping the first version, a designer comes in and say, you know, actually that small padding is too small. We actually want it a bit bigger. And that requires, mm -hmm. say, the P8 from Tailwind. Mm -hmm. Now your, mm -hmm. your data is already stored as P6. And you have to mm -hmm. like either migrate the data, which is going to be like a pain every to do that yeah. every time. Or you're going to have this dissonance between <laughs> what is the what is the data saying and what is the front end displaying, which is going to be a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I would do like no padding or P none, then P S N mm -hmm. and P L G. And in mm -hmm. the React component, that's where I would do the mapping, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, personally for me, that's, that's what I think works best. Um, mm -hmm. and, but, you know, and then that initial value now, uh, 31, it would have to be updated to BSM or, or something. Does that make sense? You think that's a... a yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think separation of, of the, the styling values, separation of concerns, like, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of like in my head, right? Like right now, like like the popular tech stack is like Next and Tailwind, but, you yeah. know, we might come out with a new framework, right? That yes. maybe is very similar to Tailwind or like builds on top of Tailwind. Um, but it could be something totally different. And even within Tailwind itself, you can redefine, right, what that P6 value is, right? And so um, I think just separating that, like, per project, like, I think that's a good practice for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then, like we mentioned, per project means your schema, you can start, do you work on an agency or? or... Uh, right now? Now I uh, I just got a new job. <laughs> I used to work for a digital operative, which merged to uh, 8560, and then I, I did like a small passion project uh -huh. for um, a local um, project in Southern California. They partner with with uh, an, a nonprofit called Mecca. Uh -huh. So this is like Mecca OC, and so they do a lot of like resources for like mental health awareness and uh -huh. things like that. Um, so with Stand, they're they're you know trying to launch a website to kind of promote their like live production play and provide resources. Um, oh. Mental health awareness, so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But I, I got a new job at Guidance Agency, so I'm pretty excited. Start next Monday. So, oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> nice. Good luck. Yeah, great start. Thank you. And mm -hmm. yeah, like you, uh, you know, agencies' life is always about how much can we reuse of the building blocks so we can focus on mm -hmm. the customer specific mm -hmm. value we can generate 
Mm -hmm. So like when you have this sort of separation of concerns, like the content is very pure in a way about the content. Uh, so mm -hmm. like your blocks are like very hardened in the sense of uh, you test it across multiple projects and you know what a two columns schema needs. You can just reuse mm -hmm. the same schema across all of your projects and then just change the mapping of the Tailwind classes per project mm -hmm. in whatever the design is, is, uh, is pointing you towards. But yeah, congratulations of you on your new job. And uh, are you going to be, uh, is this a sort of like mini sabbatical week or are you working? Uh, yeah, I'm still working on, on supporting projects for stand. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, just, just still working and uh, learning whatever I can for the new job. Um, they, they are very interested in, in, in like headless architecture and Jamstack. Um, uh -huh. So like I've been reading their case studies and like they like redid um so like they like migrated like uh i believe like Foot Locker or something like that and it was like like nine different sites internationally and they did it in like two months which is like crazy impressive um yeah. <laughs> so uh, which is really really crazy uh i'm a little yeah. nervous but but i think that just means that like they're like very organized right and i think they really value mechanisms especially why I asked the question about like, what's the best practice, right? To separate yeah. the concerns. Um, and I think organizing content in this way, you know, like it's very powerful for an agency, right? Cause they can read, like I can come in and like I can build up this infrastructure for you know, using Sanity, right? As a content management system and then setting up in a way where we can really use it for a project. Cause one of the, the I guess roadblocks with going headless is one, um, like I, I'm coming in as like a lead uh, Shopify developer. And mm -hmm. so um, like just coming in and being able to, to like start the, the headless kind of like team and then start from ground one, build something like really robust that we mm -hmm. can reuse over time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you lose going headless compared to Shopify is you lose that visual builder experience that Shopify provides. Um, they have us like a, something like, like a, a sections everywhere. So they have blocks of content you can define the schema in JSON, uh, and then um, you can, you know, a user can come in without a developer's help and like define content, right? Yeah. And yeah. so going headless, you kind of lose all of that, right? Uh, and so I'm trying to recreate that in headless because there's like so many pluses to headless, right? With, with Jamstack in terms of performance and SEO, um, and it's a much better uh, developer experience as well, which is very important for like team morale uh, and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Uh, thank you for taking the time to, to show me how to do this. this you awesome. got it. You got it. And